day, grade 8 students! Welcome to a new learning episode. This is Miss Aika, your math study buddy. Before we start, kindly prepare the following. First is your self-learning module. Second is pen and paper for note-taking and writing your answers as we go through this discussion. And most importantly is to find a place in your home where you feel comfortable to study and learn. Now, let us start! Our learning competency for today is to illustrate the SAS congruence postulate. Our objectives are to identify the corresponding parts of two congruent triangles, illustrate SAS congruence postulate, and to determine the necessary parts to show congruence between triangles. Let us recall the concept of congruent triangles. When do we say that the two triangles are congruent? We can say two triangles are congruent if their corresponding parts are congruent. Let us have an activity entitled, Give me my pair. We are going to fill in the missing correspondence of the parts of the triangles. You can write your answer on a separate sheet of paper. You can pause this video for you to have some time in writing your answers. Then you may continue watching this video after answering. Now, let us start. So given here are the two triangles, we're going to find their correspondence. So for, for the corresponding angles, we have here angle A. So based on their markings, the correspondence of angle A is angle D. So let's write angle D. And for the second one, we have angle B. The correspondence of angle B based on the markings is the angle E. So let's write here angle E. Then for the next one, we have angle C. The correspondence of angle C based on our markings is angle F. So we have here angle F. Take note that correspondence are also congruent. That's why we use the congruent symbols. So we have here angle A is congruent to angle D. Angle B is congruent to angle E. And angle C is congruent to angle F. Now let's move on with their corresponding sides. So... Ito naman yung titignan natin, yung mga straight lines sa kanilang sides. So, for the first one, we have the side AB. So, side AB is congruent to side DE. So, we write here side DE. So, the arrangement of the letters is very important. So, take note that the segment or the side AB, nag-start tayo dun sa one arc, papunta dun sa two arcs. So, dapat yung ka-correspondence niya or ka-congruent side niya ay ganun din natin isusulat. From one arc, going to the two arcs. Okay? Next one, we have here, segment BC or the side BC. So, from two arcs, going to three arcs. We have side EF. So, two arcs, going to three arcs. So, let's write side EF. And for the last one, we have the line segment AC. So, on our line segment AC, it comes from one arc going to three arcs. So, ganun din natin isusulat yung last side dun sa ating second triangle. So, we have here line segment or the side DF. So, always remember the concept of CPCTC stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So, all of our corresponding parts given the corresponding angles and the corresponding sides are congruent to each other. So, that means that these two given triangles are also congruent. So, our congruent statement here is that the triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. So, congruent triangles are used in creating the roofs of buildings and houses. We can also see congruent triangles in rails of the bridges so that it can become strong and firm. So, don't forget that in writing the congruent statement, we always need to consider the arrangement of the letters. Kasi once na magkabaliktad yung letters natin based on their corresponding sides or corresponding angles, um, mamamali na rin yung ating congruent statement. How can we say that the triangles are congruent? We can just postulate on triangle congruence in order to show that the two triangles are congruent. These postulates are based on what pairs of corresponding parts illustrate triangle congruence. Let us start with SAS congruence postulate or simply SAS postulate. 
SAS stands for Side Angle Side. This postulate states that if two sides and an included angle of the triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Included angle of a triangle is an angle between two named congruent sides of a triangle. Let's have an example. Let's identify the corresponding parts of the triangles based on the markings. So we have here two given triangles. And we are going to write its corresponding parts based on its markings. So let's first have the side. So we have here the side. We have the side AB, which is correspondence to side DB. So importante dito yung arrangement ng letters. So dito, sinulat natin ang side AB from this part going to the angle or the first arc. Then, ganun din yung pangalawa nating line segment. So, galing siya dito, which is the correspondence of A, pupunta doon sa one arc, which is the angle. Next one, we have the angles. So, the angles here shows that they are vertical angles. And, we all know that vertical angles are congruent. We can say that angle ABE corresponds to angle D, B, C. And for the last one, based on our markings, we have the second side. So, yun yung my two lines. So, we have here, line segment EB corresponds to line segment C, B. So, hindi po siya pwede maging B, C. It must be C, B. Kasi galing tayo doon sa mga correspondence ni E papunta dun sa ating angle which is B. So here are the corresponding parts of our triangle. So we have here the side, the angle, and another side. From this corresponding parts, we can say that these corresponding parts are congruent to each other. So we can write it as line segment AB is congruent to line segment DB, angle ABE is congruent to angle BBC, and line segment EB is congruent to line segment DB. Is the given angle an included angle? So this one, masasabi ba natin na included angle siya? Yes, because it can be found in between two pairs of named congruent sides. So, we can say that triangle ABE, so we have ABE, is congruent to triangle BBC. So, how do we name these triangles? We started from the first side going to the second side. So, ganun din dapat dun sa second triangle. From the first side going to the second congruent side. So, this is our congruence postulate. And this is because we have the SAS postulate or the SAS congruence postulate. Let's have another example. So, meron ulit tayo dito ang dalawang triangles. Let's determine the necessary parts of these triangles. So based on the markings, we have given here two congruent sides and one congruent angle. So let's name first the congruent side. So this one. So we have here line segment MO or the side MO which is correspondence to side DA. So let's write DA. Then, for the corresponding angles, we have here angle O corresponds to angle A because they both have one arc. Then, for the last one, based on the markings, we have the second congruent sides. So, we have here the line segment ON corresponds to so, from the arc, papunta tayo sa walang arc. So, let's have here from A, we're going to Y. So, we have here the segment AY 
or the side AY. So here are the corresponding parts of our triangle. We can also write this as line segment MO is congruent to line segment BA, angle O is congruent to angle A, and line segment ON is congruent to line segment AY. So we have there the side, angle, and side. So these are the given parts of our congruent triangles based on their markings. So let's have its congruent statement. So the congruent statement here is that triangle MON is congruent to triangle DAY. And this is because we use the SAS postulate or the SAS congruence postulate. Let us have an activity. Write all the congruent parts of each pair of triangles and we're going to prove that they are congruent. You can pause this video for you to have some time in answering the activity and you may continue watching it after answering. Now, let us answer the activity. So, given the triangles and the markings, we can say that this side is congruent to this side. So, we have here the side DO is congruent to side CG. And for the angles, we have angle O is congruent to angle G because they are correspondence to each other. So, we can write angle O is congruent to angle G. Now, what is the missing part of our triangle? We have here the side, the angle. So, what is the missing part of our congruent triangles based on the SAS postulate? So, the missing part is a side. So, saan natin nahanapin yung isa pang side based on our figure? So, we can name another congruent side through the use of our reflexive property of congruence. So, these two triangles show that they share what? A side. So, nag-share sila dito sa side na to. Meaning, pareho yung measure nung side na yun. So, we have line segment OG is congruent to line segment OG. And that's why it uses the reflexive property of congruence. So, completo na yung ating side, angle, and side. We can now say that triangle DOG is congruent. So, this is DOG. And this is congruent to triangle CGO by SAS postulate or SAS congruence postulate. Let's have another one. So we have here the second figure. We're going to write all of its congruent parts and we're going to prove if the two triangles are congruent. So kindly pause this video for you to have some time in answering the activity and just continue watching if you're done answering. Let us check your work. First, we are going to write the congruent sides of the triangles. So based on the markings, we can say that side RI, so this is our side RI, which is congruent to side CI. So here is our CI. Then, we can write our congruent angle as angle RIH, so this is RIH, is congruent to angle CIH. So we can write it as CIH. Now, meron pa rin nawawalang part dun sa ating triangle para masabi natin na sila ay congruent. So let's name the parts of our triangle. So this one is the side. Then the second one is an angle. So, ano pa yung pwede natin idagdag dun sa congruent parts natin para masabi natin that these two triangles are congruent. Okay, so we can name another side. So, the two triangles share the same side which is line segment IH 
which is congruent to line segment I H. And this is because of reflexive property of congruence. So this is the another side or another part of our triangle. Therefore, we can say that triangle R I H is congruent to triangle C I H by our S A S postulate or simply our SAS congruence postulate. So that is our discussion for today. Let's see each other again in our new learning episode. That's all for now, grade 8. Goodbye!